Welcome to the CISSP Cyber Training Podcast, where we provide you the training and tools you need to pass the CISSP exam the first time. Hi, my name is Sean Gerber, and I'm your host for this action-packed, informative podcast. Join me each week as I provide the information you need to pass the CISSP exam and grow your cybersecurity knowledge. All right, let's get started. Let's go. Hey all, Sean Gerber with CISSP Cyber Training, and I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. Today is CISSP Question Thursday. So today we're going to be talking about the various aspects as it relates to Domain 1. And we're going to be going over navigating contractual law, cybersecurity legislation, and computer crime acts. Those are some of the questions that you may see on the CISSP. And we're going to go over those as we talked about it in our podcast on Monday. But before we do, one thing I wanted to bring up was I saw this article this this week around these cyber criminals are actually stealing medical records from plastic surgery offices. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, you may or may not know what much deals with plastic surgery, but it's folks that actually may get procedures done on their bodies to help enhance or to make changes. I'll give you an example. My children, uh, one of them, they both had cleft lip and cleft palate, and so therefore they had nose revisions, mouth revisions, those kinds of things and that is a plastic surgeon well my pla- the plastic surgeons are actually getting targeted by these folks that are specifically trying to get medical records from them i think that mainly the one of the aspects that they're trying to do is in the case of much of the uh, enhancements that are occurring such as in the united states there's many people that get breast augmentation those types of aspects they're trying to then extort these uh plastic surgeons to then they're going to release these very explicit pictures of individuals and saying hey we're going to release that unless you pay up and use some sort of ransom with that and so that's that's just one aspect right could be breast augmentation it could be lip liposuctions could be all of those aspects and that's probably you don't want to take stuff from your lips but bottom line is is they are trying to take and a lot of times these folks will actually have pictures of people and they will then in turn try to use that to get leverage to them, have them pay ransom. So that was really interesting in that that's happening in California, South Dakota, it's Brazil and in the UK, it's been, it's been occurring. So you as a security person, you're going to be dealing with this a lot. And you may even, if you have a business, reach out to some of these folks to ask them if they've dealt with it and if that you could provide them some services. So there it's, it's really interesting how these cyber criminals are targeting various entities trying to gain a foothold within the medical records aspect piece of this but in the same time just trying to make money off of poor people that are having to to deal with this so it's it's not good but anyway something that i thought popped up i would have never even thought that a cyber criminal would go after a plastic surgeon because it just didn't make sense to me but people are so they need your services now more than ever All right, so we're going to get into the CISSP cyber questions of this week, and it's over domain one. You can see this video on uh, CISSP Cyber Training. You can go get there and get the video. You'll be able to see it on YouTube eventually, or you just listen to this podcast. Obviously, you'll be able to hear it immediately. So let's roll into question one. Which U.S. law makes identity theft a federal crime? A, can spam act. B, HIPAA, C, Identity Theft and Assumption Deterrence Act, or DMCA. So when it comes down to which U.S. law makes identity theft a federal crime, it is Identity Theft and Assumption Deterrence Act. It's I-T-A-D-A. That is what makes it a federal crime. Which European law focuses on data protection and privacy? A, Data Protection Act, C, or C, B, GDPR, C, the UK Misuse Act of 1990, or D, EFTA. Okay, which European law focuses on data protection and privacy? And that is GDPR, General Data Privacy Regulation is what it is called. Question three, what does the Economic Espionage Act of 1996 primarily address? A, copyright infringement. B, identity theft. C, theft of trade secrets. Or D, email spamming. 
And that is C, tra theft of trade secrets. Theft of trade secrets or the misappropriation of valuable business information that does include trade secrets underlines the importance of safeguarding your proprietary information. Question four, which law prohibits unauthorized interception of communications? A, the Can Spam Act, B, the Wiretap Act, C, the RICO Act, or just RICO, and then D, the CFAA. And the answer is the B, Wiretap Act. The Wiretap Act prohibits unauthorized interception of wire, oral, or electronic communications. Question five, which law targets unauthorized access to computer systems? A, the UK Computer Misuse Act, B, the DMCA, C, COPA, or D, ECPA. Again, which law targets unauthorized access to computer systems? And the answer is A, the UK Misuse Act of 1990. It criminalizes unauthorized access of computer systems within the UK, and it sets legal boundaries for system access, especially for international operations. Question six, which type of law deals with non-criminal disputes? A, administrative law, administrative law. B, criminal law. C, civil law. Or D, contractual law. Okay, so what type of law deals with non-criminal disputes? And the answer is C, civil law. This focuses on resolving non-criminal disputes between two parties. And it's crucial for understanding these issues, such as a breach of contract or data privacy violations would be in the context of your CISSP. And it is part of the civil law aspects. Question seven, what does CAN-SPAM Act regulate? A, identity theft. B, commercial emails, C, electronic funds transfers, or D, data protection in healthcare. The CAN-SPAM Act, what does it regulate? It com regulates commercial emails. B, the CAN-SPAM Act sets rules for commercial emails and protects consumers against unwanted solicitations. You see this all the time in your emails, and that's part of the CAN-SPAM Act. It's basically an integral part of all organization email policies, and I highly recommend that you get aware of it, especially as you become a CISSP and you're doing cybersecurity for a company. Question eight, which law governs data protection in healthcare? A, HIPAA, B, COPA, C, PCI DSS, or D, CFAA? And the answer is HIPAA, A, the Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act, it's a lot of words, uh, governs the protection of sensitive patient health information, particularly those that are crucial to the healthcare industry. Question nine, what type of law governs public administration and regulatory agencies? A, civil law, B, administrative law, C, criminal law, or D, contractual law? And the answer is B, administrative law. Administrative law is concerned with public administration and regulatory agencies. It is the key for ensuring policies and procedures are compliant with the governmental regulations. Question 10, what does DMCA protect? A, trademarks. B, digital content. C, financial data. Or D, health data. So DMCA, what does it protect? And it would be B, digital content, right? It's the Digital Millennium Co Copyright Act, DMCA. And it came out to protect digital content such as software, music, and videos, et cetera, et cetera. Not et cetera, et cetera. Uh, right, and so it's important for any type of media or software that you may have, the DMCA covers that. Question 11, which law protects children's online privacy? A, COPA, B, CISA, B, GLBA, or D-E-F-T-A. That is a acronym soup. And the answer is A, COPA. This is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, and it does protect online privacy of kids under the age of 13. And it is crucial for websites and online services that are specifically aimed towards children. So my YouTube apps, they are my YouTube channel, they ask me all the time, do you promote to kids? And so therefore you have to look and understand, would you fall under COPA? Question 12, does the RICO, what does the RICO Act provide penalties for? Okay, RICO. Okay, what does it plan act provide penalties for? A, data breach. B, email spam. C, organized crime activity. Or D, copyright infringement. So depending upon who your political ads are, right now our political person is, I think 
Donald Trump at the time of this recording is being looked under RICO. Whether or not that's true or not, who knows? But RICO has come up, and I did not know what that really was at first because I'd heard about it but didn't really know. And then after I understood the, the acronym, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that. Um, but the RICO Act is for organized crime activity, and it's what it's called is it's a racketeering influenced and corruption organizations. That's what RICO Act stands for, and it provides extended penalties for criminal acts performed in an ongoing organization basically around organized crime. So that's what they're trying to go after for the former president of the United States. Question 13. Which act focuses on targeting unsolicited marketing information? A. The Can Spam Act. B. EFTA. C. SOX. Or D. FISMA. So which act focuses on targeting unsolicited marketing information? And again, that's Can Spam Act is A, B is EFTA, C is SOX, or D is FISMA. And the answer is A, Can Spam Act. Now, the Can Spam Act did come out a while back, and it deals with penalties as far as relating to sending volumes of unsolicited email spam to consumers. And the ultimate goal was to help reduce and drop that down. This was done here in the United States, and there are various other countries that look at something very similar to it but the ultimate goal is we all get tired of this marketing information and we get we want to deal with it one of the things you can do is obviously they had to put this unsubscribe on the emails and that helped reduce that as well so it gives you the ability to opt out next question which act focuses on electronic trans funds transfers which act focuses on electronic funds transfers answer a can spam act B, EFTA, C, SOX, or D, FISMA. Okay, which act focuses on electronic funds transfers? And the, we kind of get it out of the name, EFTA, electronic fund transfers provides perfections, protections to consumers engaging in electronic fund transfers, and it aims to help these folks that are dealing with, you know, this electronic data interchange. One of the things that this was back in 1978, this that was a brand new burgeoning environment market, uh, but they had to put some levels of controls in place because data was being transferred in a digital format. But this did help reduce the help with the rights of the transfers, liabilities, and responsibilities of all the participants in that network. Question 15, which law focuses on integrity of financial reporting by corporations? A, FISMA, B, SOX, C, PCD, PCI DSS, or D, GDPR? And the answer is B, SOX. Sarbanes-Oxley aims to protect the fraudulent financial reporting by corporations. And it's good, it is crucial for your uh, security professionals in the financial sector. You need to understand that. All right, that is all I've got for you today. Hey, go out to CISSP Cyber Training. I'm looking to make some changes. We're actually going to be doing some coaching and, and uh, mentoring for people. Uh, I think you're going to like it a lot. I have a lot of response from people that are working on their CISSP, but they go, what do I do for my career? How do I plan for that? Just expect to see some changes around this because I know there's a definite need for it. And with my background of over 20 some years of doing cybersecurity, working from all different positions, all the way up to a CISO, I understand what you need. I, again, I came from nothing. I was flying B-1 bombers to where I'm at today. I can help you and I'm looking to provide some level of coaching out there and mentoring for you to help you get the career you want. And that includes resume prep, that includes helping you with interview questions so that you can reach and attain the goals you want financially for you and your family. All right, again, go out to CISSPCybertraining.com. Check it out. I guarantee you, you will love what I've got out there to help you with your CISSP and on with your future as well. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the flip side. See ya.